Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome again to my uh, live streaming of this week. Another Wednesday, another live coding. Um, yeah, well, the last couple of weeks we've been very busy building a, uh, an extension to a SharePoint framework um, web part. And we were using uh, a custom connector for the power platform in combination with an API written in Azure Functions. And today we're going to take a look at migrating that flow that we created um, that was using that custom connector to use Azure Logic Apps instead. So. Um, Maybe you don't know what Flow or what uh, Logic Apps are. Um, so I'm going to show you a little bit around uh, with that. Um, and I'm going to explain the reason uh, why we are moving to Azure Logic Apps um, from Flow. And um, I'll, I'll do it a little bit along the way, but in short, it is because we want to use the Azure Key Vault, um, which is a secure storage for uh, credentials and keys uh, within Azure. And we can integrate that within our uh, Logic App uh, so that we do not store any uh, sensitive information within the Logic App itself. Uh, but we get, uh, in our case, a uh, authentication token from Azure Key Vault. And one bonus for today, um, yesterday was announced that uh, uh, there's an obfuscation feature um, that is available now in Azure Logic Apps. And it was a long awaited feature um, where you can obfuscate sensitive data within uh, a Logic App run so that when you look at the run later, you're not able to see that sensitive information, which obviously is uh, very useful for example, um, obfuscating uh, the token that we got from the key vault. Otherwise it would still be plainly uh, available uh, and readable for everyone who could read the logic app run. So yeah, let's dive in and Let's see how we're gonna do this. Follow along. So here we are in um, Postman at this moment. Um, and I have set up in Postman a request. Let's see, for example, get user user data attribute options. This is calling, oh, this is calling the local function. That's not what I meant to do. This is what I meant to do. I uh, wanted to test out the flow that we created. And when uh, we created the flow, um, it generated some very uh, long URL for us, uh, but we can send stuff to it. Uh, Trigger manual state deleted. Okay, so it's not working anymore. So we're going to fix that first. Uh, but we should be able to execute our flow this way and get data back. All right. So let's take a look at the flow then, and let's see why it's not working. So here I am in Office 365, and that's where we have Flow. So Flow is uh, part of the Power Platform. The Microsoft Power Platform, and the Power Platform consists of uh, a few products. Uh, so we have Power BI, um, which is a dashboarding uh, solution. Uh, we have Power Apps, uh, through which you can uh, relatively easy create simple apps. Um, and the idea behind this is that uh, our users can build their own apps uh, without the need of a uh, 
software developer, um, which is true uh, until a certain point. But uh, let's not go into that for now. And then we have Microsoft Flow, um, some reason not Power Flow or something, um, because that would make sense for the Power Platform. Uh, but Flow is basically a, a workflow engine um, to connect various systems together. Um, it's a visual solution, so you can drag drop uh, boxes, um, configure them, and that way uh, connect to all kinds of systems. So we have used Flow here. So let me go to my flows. So here we have the Ava Signals flow. That's what we created um, some time ago. And that flow isn't working anymore. And that could be because our um, API is currently still running uh, locally uh, on my machine and uh, need to set up the uh, let's say uh, the tunnel so that's the flow which is in the cloud can access the API which is on my machine um, <clears throat> and since that that's not running anymore so let's start setting it up so that we have everything we're running again so I'll fire up the API which uh, I have here built in Visual Studio some reason it's frozen ah, there we go and let's get this out of the way it's not more okay so our function is running now uh, so this is the api then uh, we need to set up a tunnel from the clouds to uh, my machine. Um, and I use ng-rock for that. Um, so I have a highlight on my uh, YouTube channel. So if you go to watchmecode.tv, you end up on my YouTube ch channel and I have created a highlight over here using ng-rock to call a local function from flow. If you want to learn how to set it up in a little bit more detail, uh, you can watch this uh, small clip. Um, I'm gonna just go here and it says it, there's a new version. So let's press control U so that I get the update. And it's gonna restart probably. Yeah, so I can now restart for a new version, but I need to restart anyway, because currently it's forwarding to this port, 3979, and my function is running on 171771. So, press control C, yeah, there we go. And now I can Um, by the way, uh, if you're following that uh, little highlight, you will not see this host header over here. Um, I guess for functions, that must, uh, that's not necessary. Um, but I discovered that when I was uh, hosting a ASP.NET MVC API, um, that uh, flips out on seeing a different host header. So this way I can rewrite the host header to be local hosts and then it will accept my incoming requests. Um, but for now, we don't need it, so let's leave it off. So I'm gonna set up an HTTP um, tunnel to port 7071. Let's wait for ng-rock to set it up, all right. Now, since every time I run ng-rock, I get a different URL, so I need to configure that once in my custom connector. So I go here to my custom connector. I have it open already. This is the company connect customer connector, custom connector. 
and over here I have the host and I need to update it. So that's for now while I'm testing it out locally on my machine. Um, in the future, of course, we'll host it somewhere uh, on the internet and then uh, we can use a fixed host for this. Uh, if you were following along from the previous uh, uh, streams I did, you'll notice that I now have a icon which looks a little bit better and I've set a different background color and some description so it, uh, the custom connector is a little bit more um, yeah, more more complete than it used to be. So let's update this. All right, so now it's using the new uh, URL, so I can now refresh this and if it works I can change this, save it. It will do a call through the tunnel to my machine and that should be visible here. So you see we receive a delete and a post. So the delete was for the uh, current version of the trigger and the post is for the new version of the trigger. And since I changed uh, a character, it just does a remove and re-add of the webhook. I'll change it back. Just because it's a little bit nicer. And again, we should see a delete in the post. I didn't see it this time, but you can always inspect it uh, over here. So ng-rob always gives you this local URL on port 4040. Um, and there you can see, oh, it's still doing stuff. So that's not good. What's it doing? Notice it's, the post works, the deletes, not so much. Hmm. So this is the delete. What's the issue? Oh, well, let's just see what it named it. So it's lo running in this case on a storage account locally on my machine. There I have this table, um, check this out, so it's named correctly, timestamp doesn't make sense though, that's uh, it's one week further ahead. Hmm. Let's just remove this and start over. Right. Um, bad things don't always happen to bad people. Forces that keep you get this on track before. Now I see the post coming in. Is it a new one? Mm. Right. So. Saving it again, and I should receive. Hmm. That's not good. Okay, maybe we are really a little bit screwed up here. Um, let's try a new one. Fix the trigger. So what's up with you? Yeah, I understand that. Oh, no freaking way. This just happens to me every single time. 
Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so it should be working now. Um, so this win nice little debug window, if I click here, for example, it will freeze the execution of the complete process. So I need to click somewhere down below, press enter, and now you can see it's not so showing select anymore. And the process can continue. A lot of fun. Anyway, so what have we got now? Signals 2, but we want to name it signals. See how nice it looks now with the icon and the colors applied. Much better. Save. There we go. This is much better. All right, so the flow works uh, just as we left it last week. Um, I have already removed the token. So this is some random token, um, not the real token. And we're gonna try to do a call to uh, Avas and get a response. That's not gonna work completely because obviously we have a filled token. But now we can do a send to this callback URL. Let's take this. Basically, we're going to invoke the flow. So if we go here, we can see that it has been invoked by me. Um, Although, obviously, we cannot get these signals from AFOS because we have an invalid token. So it will tell us an authorized. So that's fine. We'll fix that when we have migrated the flow over to the logic apps and we uh, changed it to use the token from keyvaults. So this is Flow. Uh, so Flow is part of Office 365 and up until now I believe it was included in uh, E3 licenses by default. I'm not entirely sure about the licensing aspect of it. Uh, I know there are a couple of changes um, already there or coming up and uh, which limits the use of Flow a little bit so you need to buy additional licenses if you want to make more use of flow. Um, so that could be one thing why you want to migrate to logic apps, but not necessarily. Um, but logic apps are basically what we call the enterprise variant of flow or the developer variant of flow. Um, you'll notice that when we are doing the migration to logic apps, the flow or logic apps is very, very similar. In fact, it's uh, the same engine, same tool, but with a couple of small differences. Um, and Logic Apps runs within an Azure subscription, and that means that you just pay for use. So every time a flow is executed, you get billed for the number of actions and triggers and stuff. Um, one uh, advantage of having it in Logic Apps is that it can be better uh, maintained, but we can also integrate better with other Azure resources, for example, with Key Vault. That is what we're going to take a look at. So we have this flow now here, but we do not want to have this flow here. We're going to try to uh, export it and move it over. So let's see if there are I, I have an idea how to do this, but let's see if there are new solutions that I haven't thought of yet for migrating flow to Logic Apps. Uh, let's see. Let's build on top of Logic Apps. Not gonna create an ARM template. It's a little bit too hard for now. Uh, 
By the way, can we use key vault at all? I think so. Measure key vault, there we go. And for example, I want to get it. I can connect the servers. How does it connect the one? I think I want to connect the pine. No, what are you doing? <laughs> I do not want to do that. Oh, this is so annoying. Anyway, we do not want to have this service principle connected here. We want to use uh, app principle, what it's called, app identity, app identity, to be able to access the key vault. So. Um, yeah, so the it's also describing just to export it. Cloud Genius. My former colleague Jean Paul. He's also exporting. Ah, oh, look, this is interesting. Deploy a custom template. Okay, that sounds like a better plan. So let's follow uh, Jean Paul's instructions. Thank you, Jean Paul. Uh, I'll make sure I put you up later. Thank you for your blog. Um, so let's go to the flow. First off, we're going to export this flow. We did export this as a logic app template. As a logic app template, yes, that was uh, what I was expecting. And now we have this JSON over here. And let's format it. So this is what a typical flow or logic app looks like. You'll notice it has a logic app name and location. So it pretty much gives it away that it is a logic app. And within the resource, the various steps are defined. So save this and move over to to an Azure subscription so let's go here let's go to the Azure portal where we go to app services no let's, let's see if we have a research group already because I want to Put it into the. Put it in the Spark Company Connect test for now. Since we're still testing it out. Um, and where do we have deployments? Where did it now? Process broken. Deploy a custom templates. Ah, we just need to search for it. Deploy a custom templates.
why don't I see an option? No, create a resource. Custom templates. Template deployments. Yeah, this looks like it. Right. Then I believe he said build your own template in the editor. Click on build the um, templates. Yeah. Awesome. Here we go. Next. Right side paste it. Yeah. The same version you downloaded or the formatted version. Let's take the formatted version we have here. Select all, copy. Go over here, select all, paste. Okay, next screen. So we need to move on to the next screen. Save. Yes. What did I do wrong? You would think that it would this would be easier. So tell me that I do not have any resources, which isn't true. Load file. What am I missing here? So, I do not have any next button. Let's start over. Okay, so create. Build your own templates. So we have schema, parameters, resources. I believe it's a little bit different than what we have here. So here we have template and then schema. So maybe, just maybe, we should get rid of the template and just copy this piece over here. There we, ah, there we go. Now it sees that we have parameters, we have resources. That looks more like it. Save. There we go. Okay. Much better. We want to stick it into the your sponsorship in the Inspire Connector Tests resource group uh, and get uh, signals. That's how we we're going to call it. Um, we, we use the resource group location as the location and let's just get rid of this. Purchase. Sounds like we're gonna pay a lot of money. It's deploying now. Okay. Interesting. Builds. Ah. 
Yes, that's unfortunate because I am using a custom connector. Hmm. I don't think I'm would be able to migrate that, so we may need to do it all over again, unfortunately. But at least we need to have that custom connector over here. So let's start with that. So I want to create a Logic Apps custom connector, which is more or less the same as it is um, in Flow, but then in uh, in, in Azure. It's also a little bit silly. So I want to name it Company Connect. I want to specify it in this resource group. There we go. Just here. Let's use the automation options because I want to rename it. Because now it's using the same display name as it's the name, and I just want to name it. Uh, okay, let's edit it. Why? Why would you not allow me to add it? Okay, we can do the same trick as we did. We copy the complete templates. We go to the marketplace, skip this. We'll search for the custom uh, deploy. And we'll do the same thing. Paste it here. And this time, let's give it another parameter connector display. Okay. And we can use the display name over here. And now I can select it over here. Uh, I want to have it over here, that's right. The name I want it to be company. No. Company Connect. This plan I want it to be Company Connect. Location West Europe. Yeah, that is the API version. I really don't know. So, to fix that, let's create another custom connector. the automation options and just see what it specifies here. Uh, parameters, API version. Oh yeah, purchase. We have a portion to agree to the terms. And let's go ahead. All right, so this is deploying Okay, so in order to migrate our custom connector, we had to create it first. So 
So now we have this connector and I can now edit it. And this designer looks very similar to what we've seen. Um, we see over here. Oh, yeah, that looks different. Uh, the same. Yeah. Um, and what we could do here is we go back one. We can download the specification. Let's remove an old version that I have probably in my downloads folder. So downloads, it will give me this company connect swagger file and swagger is an open API specification language. If I'm correctly defining it and the open API specification describes uh, how an API works. So what operations do you have on the API? Uh, what parameters uh, do you need to feed them? Uh, do you feed parameters in the URL, in the body, in the headers? What do you get back? All that stuff that's defined in the open API specification. Um, and you can start your custom connector with an open API specification. You can also export it. So that's one we did just now. And for the custom connector in Azure, we're gonna take this open API file and import it. So I'm gonna select the swagger file that we just exported. And uh, let's take the icon as well have that still on my desktop go and let's also take over here let's take the background color to make it all nice and then we do not yet have set up authentication something for in the future. And here in the definition, we have our various operations. Let's update it. Cool. So now we have our custom connector. Now let's rebuild this flow that we have, but then as a logic. So now we have the company connects connector here. Let's add a Logic app. Create the logic app. And since the references of the custom connector are not the same, I'm, I'm not able to import my flow probably. So I'm not going to try that, especially since the uh, steps are very similar or very, very simple. I'm just going to. create a new one and redo the steps. I created in the same resource group, not gonna enable log analytics yet. Let's create it. This will give me an empty logic app. Let's take the flow, we put them side by side. Make it a bit easier for us to understand what's going on. Uh, put that on the right. It's on the left. Uh, close this a little bit. Get off of signals. Cool. So let's get started with the logic apps. We do not want to start with one of the default triggers, so let's start with a blank. And I'm searching for the connectors. 
and let's search for company connects it should now be in here there it is so cool and we want to use this operation which uh, will register a new uh, data source with our api which is what we want so let's select that then we need to set up a connection but since we do not do not use any authentication it can automatically connect which is fine um you see that all the parameters are below the fold so that's something that we should change let's do that right away because this is just not that great i'm gonna head over here resource groups connector and we're gonna edit it because you can specify which options get shown where in your definition and just want to show you how that is done so this is the trigger and I have two triggers as you might have seen but we're now gonna focus on the subscribe user data attribute option trigger <sighs> mouthful um, but it has a couple of um, parameters. So first off, uh, you have some gen generic uh, information you need to describe your trigger with, summary description and some ID. In this case, it's a webhook trigger, not a polling. And then we have this body here. That's what we want to take a look at. Because this body describes um, what we will send as a request to subscribe this webhook. Um, you s didn't see the callback URL, and it's because it's marked as internal. So that one, that's one of the visibility options which uh, you use if you want to automatically set a specific value, but you do not want the user to set it then we also have the other three options um, but you notice that those we need to select that from i can show it again so if i pick my connector here uh, this one you notice that this add new parameter is visible so i need to open it up and select which parameters i want to set so for example, I want to have the title and the category always be visible because that's what I want the user to uh, to set. But the icon, for example, is optional. So I can leave that uh, invisible for my users. Um, so for example, if I go to the category and I want to set that to importance, importance is always visible. I want to set the title also to importance and I want to set the icon to advanced and advanced is uh, you need to click out open the parameters window so now I've set this up let's update the connector and then if I refresh uh, my logic app then I will get my updated connector a second to save refresh okay yes no Click here, blank. This is one of the other advantages of Logic Apps. You have this for you section. 
it remembers which connectors you've recently used. So for example, I've now used the company connect connector previously. It will show up immediately. Within Flow, I need to start typing a company connector every single time. I need to add an action or a trigger, which may become cumbersome. So now I select the user data attribute option again, and now you'll notice that I have this title and category automatically visible for me. And if I click here, I can also specify the icon, which I'm gonna do now. And if I select it, yeah, you'll notice it shows up. So this is the title. So we're gonna call the signals, or let's call the signals two for now. So it will, we'll notice that we have two different, uh, maybe signals from logic app. And category remains AFAS. I capitalize that. And did I click away the flow? Oh no, I've set it to the side here. That's office is capital, so let's use the same here. Let's put it side by side again. The design area a little bit more bigger. Let's use the same icon. There we go. So that was the first step. Next, I want to initialize this token. But that doesn't, yeah, we can do that for now. Uh, so initialize variable. I'm gonna call it Alpha's token, and it's gonna be a string. There we go, and the value will initially be, well, let's copy it over. It's just a dummy value, so it doesn't really do anything, but okay, go ahead. Name this to be initialize alphas token to be a little bit more descriptive. Okay, next up is the HTTP request. So let's do HTTP over here and then we'll do it without swagger, so just a plain. This is going to be the URL method, is going to be gets um oh this is new never seen that before I don't have that in the logic apps apparently oh nice anyway <laughs> Um, then we're gonna need this authentication and we're gonna do this. Oh, this is because the screen is too small. Uh, that's why. See, so this is gonna be the authorization header and the authorization header. See, here it tries to do it like that. Um, there's just no way to open it now. I need to make my screen bigger so that I'm able to see this. I can copy the expression. Yes. And I can go over here and paste the expression. There we go. A little bit crowded, unfortunately. Anyway. All right, so this is gonna do the HTTP call. Let's rename this as well to read get signals to be a little bit more descriptive. And then we're gonna do a response. It's the easiest way to find it. I thought, but it isn't. Let's search for response. So you need to have the response of the requests connector and we're going to reply with a status 200 and we're going to count the length of the items that we got back so again make this a little bit bigger and i'm going to get back to here so let's leave it like this and let's just stick it in here there we go 
So basically we've recreated our logic app. I can now save it and it should automatically register as well. So let's see. One view, see it at fast. See your signals as delete, of course. All right, so let's see what we have here. Did it work? Ah, it works. Okay, awesome. So now you'll notice that we have the signals from Logic App and we have the signals from Flow. Um, we just want to have one. So what we can do now, since we have copied it over, is go to our Flow and say, okay, bye bye, Flow. You've done your work, you're done. So when I delete it, you'll notice that it does a delete to our API as well. And it's gone. So now we only have the signals from Logic App left. And because of the naming, I want it to be a little bit more. So I can close down this other window. We can rename it here to be just signals. And it will update it in our table to be signals. Awesome. So that's our migration from Flow to Logic Apps. Uh, unfortunately, not completely automatic because we used a custom connector that didn't exist in Azure Logic Apps. and. Uh, that way we could not use the uh, steps as described in the blog post of Jean-Paul Ravensberg. Um, but if we were to use any of the available uh, connectors, which are quite many, uh, then we could just follow those steps and migrate our flow easily into Azure Logic Apps. Right, so we have this Logic App here now, but what was bothering me is this token value because this is just plain readable and um, we want to keep this secure so that not everyone can read the value from this, um, from this token and use it for other uses for example. So Q as your key fault. So what is Azure Key Vault for people who don't know? Let's just read the description as given by Microsoft. So it's a safeguard, cryptographic keys and other secrets used by cloud apps and services. So basically it allows you to store any key, password, credential, in a secure manner, um, certificates as well, and uh, manage access to uh, to the to the keys. Who can read them? Who can write them? Um, and that way, keep control over your secrets. And it's one way of getting it out of your application. And we're gonna use it from. Our logic apps now but you can use it from all kinds of different applications it's just an api that you can use um, so we're using it a lot within azure functions as well um, but you can basically use it from anywhere if you are able to call a http endpoint which basically is everywhere these days so uh, let's leave this logic app open over here and let's move to this other tab where we will start first by creating our defaults. So we're gonna go to our resource group. I'm gonna say, okay, give me a key fault. Create. Since key faults names are, I think, globally unique, we need to make sure that we can have a version for test and for production. So, the test is probably taken. So, just to check if it's uh, 
important to have a unique name. So let's call this the same as our resource group. Uh, well, we can just call it company connect TST. Gonna put it in our TST resource group. It's just rising tier. I think we're just gonna go with standard. I'm not really sure what HSM is the hardware secure. I think that's why it's a little bit pricey. Let's go for standard access policies. So that's where we're gonna tell Keyfold who can access this Keyfold. And by default, it's the one creating it. So that's me. You can also specify which networks can access it. We're gonna leave that to all networks. It's just fine. We're gonna secure it using the access policies. So let's create the key vault. Take a few seconds. And there it is already. So let's go into the key vault. And in within the key fold blade, we have the option to uh, manage keys, secrets, and certificates, as well as access policies and other stuff. Right now, we're interested in keys. Secret has secrets, probably secrets. Because it's just a password sort of. So we're going to create a secret, we're going to name it AFAS token and I prepared this so I can get the token from my password manager so that I should not have to show it. Now let's go with This first. Uh, we don't set an expiration or activation date, and we'll just create this. So now the token has been created successfully. Cool. So now we uh, want to access this token from our logic app, but as you'll notice, we just have one access policy for me, but not for. A logic app or anyone else so they are not able to access uh, the key fault so let's fix that and a perfect way to do that is by using plus um, calls oh, let's go to logic app again uh, the identity the managed identity yes that's what was it was called. So what, if I turn this on, my logic app itself will become an identity within my tenant, which means that I can grant access to resources to that particular an, uh, identity. Um, and so I can also grant it access to my Azure key faults, just like it's a user or a service account. So let's turn it on, press save, which means that we get an get alpha signals in the Azure Active Directory. So currently it's not uh, able yet to use a user uh, managed identity, so that we can specify the identity ourselves, but it will create a identity for us. All right, so it created this identity. I get an object ID to easy find, easily find it. Now let's switch back to our key fault and let's create a new policy to be able to read keys from this key fault. So I generally only want one thing to be done. So first let's select the principal and I'm not sure if I can select it by name. Yeah, so here it is already. This is the managed identity that we just created by turning on this flag. Next, I want it to just 
be able to do a get. It should know which key to get and that's it. It should only be able to get keys, not uh, secrets, not keys, not certificates. Uh, an authorized application. Ensure authorize this application to perform the specified conditions on the user group's behalf. And it's not required this time. Cool. So now we have this second access policy. Do not forget to save, otherwise it will not be applied. That's not the first time I will step into that trap. Um, so it's safe now. So now we can go to our Logic App Designer and well first let's try to call this URL so that we can see that we can actually execute it. And therefore we'll go to get the comic URL here and in postman we're gonna post to it. It will fill same problem as we had <coughs> with our flow because the token is invalid of course so here we can see that it failed but it was executed and it's failing on the same step because of the failed token Cool. Well, we can execute it, so that means that we can test it as well. That's great. Let's edit and add an action to get our token from the key vault. So we have an Azure key vault connector. We want to get a secret. Probably the one that I want. And um, in this case, I can sign in. So I can sign in using my using my uh, username and password. But that will uh, mean that it will try to access the key vault as myself. So uh, for various reasons, not um, what I would like to do instead. I would like to connect with a service principal. Mm, no. I'll... What am I missing here? Sign in, I will need to. I do not want to use my account. I want to use Managed identity. So, what was what step am I missing now? Uh, logic app key vault managed identity. I believe there's one step I'm just missing. Different than it did in mine. Let's workflow settings.
this step is what I've done. Want to automate it? HTTP, but I want to call default. And let's call this Perhaps not possible yet. To do from yeah, it looks like uh, we are not able to use the default REST API itself. Um, the key fault connector itself, we need to use the REST API. Hmm. So this will take us... So instead of the... Key fault connector, we're gonna take the HTTP. HTTP. We're going to use the managed identity and it's the loading. We need to have the URL defaults. Maybe we can just get the URL to the secret. a secret identifier. Gets. Boom. So we need to set this. So, 
API version. Or did we already have it in here? Maybe this works. I don't know. Let's try it. So saved it. Now just call it. Here we have a new field run. Authorized. Let's just redo its identical to what it does here. Use API. submits which will just try same call again and not rise hmm. Just check that we have the X policy here. So that's in place. Let's give it all for now. See if that's the issue. And then we should be able to do exactly what we did. All the secrets. You're not, uh, I just copied it from here, but it should not have this training slash. Can we? So probably it will work. Just want to have get enables. And from your secrets. Just want to get this particular secrets. I'm not interested in always having to get the latest version, I just want this one. Does this work too?
Now I need to perform the start action. Ah, cool. All right, so it now got my value. Oh, there's my secret. And I do not want to make it readable here. So, because otherwise, uh, if I would view a run of my logic app, my secret would still be available somewhere. And I do not want that. So, there's some new feature that was just announced, I believe, yesterday. Let's see if we can use that to obfuscate it. Yeah, so it should be somewhere in here. Oh, that's to control access to the inputs and outputs. In your logic app through an S3, you have these options. Hide inputs and outputs in run history by using obfuscation. Okay. The trigger action where you want to secure data, select the ellipsis button, then select settings. Then on either secure input, secure outputs, or both, when you're finished, select done. It shows a lock item in the title bar. Tokens that represent secure outputs from previous actions also show a lock. Example when you select search and output. Then see if an action that took shows a lock. Nice. All right, let's see if it works with the HTTP connector. First, let's rename this puppy and uh, get. Uh, plus token. Then on the settings, we should be able to secure the outputs in this case. I'm not that interested in the inputs. Done. Save. Cool. There's the lock icon. And what if we were to rerun? Can we see the outputs? No, we cannot. So there we go. So it's, it will obfuscate or remove all the outputs information. So it's not possible to just limit it to a single value. So if you enable this, all the outputs will be uh, removed altogether versus the authorization, I believe. Uh, one, no, I don't see it here. So if you have an authorization header in your HTTP request, it will just obfuscate your authentication header and everything else will be readable so it's it's a trade-off um, but we may be able to work around this so we, but we must be, sh be very careful where we use this value because otherwise we might still be uh, showing it somewhere I want to take the token here um, and I believe it came down from from 
the value. So I think we need to do body from the get Arthas token and property was named value. We're probably now gonna expose it anyway, or we need to set this to the same security. Let's see how that works. So here's that run. Ah, nice. So it, it understands if I've disabled this. Um, if I prevented this as an output, if I'm using anything from that in uh, subsequent actions, it will hide it there as well. So that's that's nice. That's cool. Very cool. Oh, this, for example, what I meant with the authorization header here, you see that it is sanitized. I was hoping it would work in a similar way so that we could see all the other properties with the exception of uh, one or more properties that I want to explicitly sanitize. Um, it doesn't appear to work that way, unfortunately, but maybe that's something that we can give as feedback to the team. Um, hopefully they can work that in because now it's very difficult to understand what's going on here. Um, if something else fails. So now we are an authorized, so let's now change it to use the actual token. Instead of the dummy value that I entered, which means that I would probably also get a new version here with a new address. So Right, so value of the secrets, I'm getting that from my password manager, pasting it in here. Bowie. So now we have this version. I need to copy that URL. Obviously, you can figure out ways to get always the latest version, but now we're just going to use a targeted version. All right. Saving. Well, let's see what happens now. I'm going to resubmit this. I would expect it to work now, but... Oh yeah, nice. So now it's getting the token from Key Vault. It's still initializing this variable. We can skip this step if we would like to, but um, and then it's used here in the authorization, but it's sanitized automatically by uh, logic apps so we can now call this API with a token but not show it anywhere on screen uh, if we don't want to and it's cool that's very cool so now we should be able to run it from Postman as well and 200 okay we get back zero which is probably the number of items that I have in Avas. We see a new successful run. And in the output we see that we have zero rows, so that makes sense. Cool, okay, so uh, that was a quick look to the new uh, obfuscation feature. So again, um, 
the new feature is uh, available, I think, on pretty much any uh, any action. Uh, not for variables. That's maybe for my custom. Yeah, it works for my custom connector as well. So uh, you have these two options now here for secure inputs and the secure outputs. Once you enable this, it will secure the value throughout your whole logic app run, which is pretty great. Only downsides we could think of now is that you are not able to see anything uh, within the inputs or outputs when you enable this, because it will remove the complete input or the complete outputs. Um, well, that, that can be uh, a little bit difficult when you want to debug your uh, run and there's some issue in either one of the inputs or outputs, but it's removed because of this limitation. But anyway, nice. So we've done it. It's a wrap. So what we've did today is... Um, we, we went for from having a uh, flow in uh, Office 365 in the Power Platform and having a custom connector uh, uh, in the Power Platform as well, migrating that over to Azure, uh, to the custom connectors in Azure, which is basically the same. So we were able to export the uh, Open API specification, also known as the Swagger. Uh, import it in our, um, our custom connector in Azure and uh, run from there. Um, and we had to recreate the Logic App, unfortunately, uh, in Azure Logic Apps from the flow um, because uh, we were using this custom connector and the reference to the connection just fails. Uh, so we were not able to automatically uh, deploy that uh, using the custom deployments uh, feature in the Azure portal. Um, but if you have flows that are all using um, the out of the box uh, connectors or just the connectors from the marketplace that are readily available, uh, you can pretty much easily migrate. Uh, there is uh, an exception there because there are a couple of connectors that are only available in the power platform and i believe one of them is the approval um, workflow or the approval request that is only available in flow so if you have a um, flow using any of those um, connectors you're not probably not able to migrate them to logic apps using that custom deployment uh, method that i showed you um, and you probably need to recreate it or you need to remove those actions from your logic app first and then uh, from your flow first and then migrate it over. All right. And uh, yeah, at last uh, we looked at the uh, obfuscation feature that was announced yesterday. Uh, so that also uh, seems to be a big improvement. Um, so now we can have secrets in our logic apps without showing them in our runs, uh, which is pretty great. Um, now that we have the flow or well, the logic app in Azure, um, we're going to continue next week with um, setting up the API in Azure so that we uh, can get rid of that tunnel that we now set up using ng-rock and we can call the API directly from the cloud. Um, so last week we already set up a bit of the automatic builds, uh, sort of part of the CI in Azure DevOps. Um, next week, we're gonna take a look at how to deploy that uh, to an Azure function in uh, a subscription in Azure and configure our custom connector to call that instead of our uh, version burning on our machine. So if you're interested in that, be sure to follow me and uh, hit up that notification bell so that you get notified when the next live stream is going to go live. 
Um, otherwise, uh, I'm trying to stick to a schedule of every Wednesday starting at 4 p.m. CET, so the Central European time, or 7 a.m. Uh, Pacific time. Um, so check your calendars to see if you can make that. And I hope to see you next week. Have a good day. Bye.